How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Xbox Corner. My name's Luke and today on the channel we're taking a look at The Chant, a Series X and S exclusive which dips into both the survival horror and the narrative side of things. As you find yourself on a remote island involved with a cult and fighting for your life against cosmic terrors from another dimension. With that said though, drop a like if this one helps you out, subscribe for more Xbox related content including reviews, deals and graphical comparisons weekly, and let's get into it. So the storyline in the chant centers around a young woman called Jess, who suffering from traumatic events in her past, decides to head out to a remote island retreat and meet up with a friend, who suggests some spiritual healing from the local cult out there might do her a spot of good. Needless to say, the cult appears to have ulterior motives, and while performing a spiritual ritual, Jess and Co inadvertently open a passage into the gloom, a kind of parasitic dimension which feeds off negative energy, which rather conveniently is supplied in abundance by each of the island's inhabitants having something nasty hiding in the pasts. Thus the gloom threatens to take over the island, and so now it falls to you to try and close the portal, investigate the cult which opened it, attempt to save your fellow retreat goers, all the while fighting your own inner demons. Now I wouldn't say that the chant has the most original plot of all time, and I'd definitely say it lends from the likes of Stranger Things and other cult movies and TV shows with its themes and concepts, but there's also a lot of work gone into developing the lore behind the island, the cult and its monsters, which can be discovered through documents and video reels found strewn about the island, and seeking out these documents is actually actively encouraged and rewarded. Personally, I didn't find myself particularly invested in any of the characters. I felt like each of them got their own 5 minutes of fame as you progress through the game, but I never really cared about any of them or got to understand much of the backstories, and they kind of just served as a means to direct you from A to B. The storyline on the whole, however, was relatively decent. It tied the game together and kept things pushing forward, and though again I didn't really find myself super invested in it, I enjoyed the themes and I did appreciate that your actions influenced the game's endings, of which there are three in total to discover. Now, gameplay wise, I'll start by giving my opinions on where this one sits in comparison to other survival horror games and action games, and the most accurate description I can give is that it kind of feels like a mixture of The Evil Within and Senua's Sacrifice, with a hefty dose of Stranger Things for good measure. The game is predominantly linear in its format, with it having 6 chapters in total, each generally presented as an isolated area, although you will be travelling back and forth across the interconnected island using a fast travel system and revisiting certain locations to access new ones. Now, the progression through the game is barred by different coloured gloom fields which resonate with the coloured prisms that each character wears, and only by obtaining these can you actually enter the fields and continue onwards, so there's kind of a loose gameplay loop to follow which generally involves you interacting with a specific character affected by the gloom, pursuing them as they're manipulated by it and attempting to save them. And the first stage of this usually requires you to make your way to a unique location on the island. Once there, as is the case with other survival horrors, you'll find plenty of locked doors or obstructions in the way, which often require specific items to pass, many of which must be combined together in your inventory. And then the whole thing usually culminates in some kind of boss battle, after which you receive a new prism crystal, allowing you to progress onward. While for me this wasn't the most exciting of concepts, and it did become a little bit repetitive, each area did offer its own unique feel and set of objectives to complete, which kept things reasonably varied, though I really would have liked to have had some kind of puzzles to solve to mix things up a little, rather than just hunting down objects and slotting them into holes. Now aside from the core progression dynamics, there are also the survival horror mechanics, and there's actually a considerable amount of depth to these when compared with something like Resident Evil or The Evil Within. 
To start with, you have three core stats, those being mind, body and soul, each serving a different purpose, with the simplest of these being your body or your health, and the pools of each of these can be seen as curved bars in the bottom left corner. Lose all of your health or body meter, you're dead, it's simple. The mind bar essentially serves as your sanity level, and throughout the game you'll come under mind attacks from monsters and shocking events, which you must quickly counter or take mind damage. And once this bar is depleted, Jess will then have a panic attack, which I'm gonna be honest, while being quite a cool mechanic, actually turns out to be pretty damn annoying, as it leaves you completely unable to perform any kind of action and instead you've just got to run away to safety to recover. Finally, your spirit bar is essentially your mana, which allows you to perform various prism abilities gained as you collect each character's prism crystal, or alternatively it can be exchanged to regain mind through meditation. Now I actually quite liked this holy trinity stat system, and I felt that it really played into the game's mechanics and combat system, with each stat serving an important role as opposed to just being a generic attribute, as you actually gain experience towards each of these stats based on your actions, which not only affects the ending you get, but also determines what abilities you're able to unlock in the game's upgrade system. Now, finally, to touch on the combat system, this is where I'm relating the game to Senua's Sacrifice, as combat is primarily melee focused, and you'll be wielding three different melee weapons, which are effective against three different enemy types. But in addition to these, you also have your prism abilities and a few different offhand weapons, which can be either thrown at enemies or placed on the ground to create traps. The combat itself is pretty straightforward, with you dodging enemies' attacks whilst piling in with your own, but the abilities at your disposal offer some good versatility and utility, allowing you to stun and repel enemies and control the fight when you're facing off against multiple opponents, and the enemies themselves also have some decent variety, as do the boss battles, which I'm going to avoid spoiling in this review for obvious reasons. Where the game falters in terms of its combat system though is with the actual crafting of weapons, as much like in other survival horrors where ammo scarcity becomes an issue, I also found myself running out of materials to craft the melee weapons, and unlike Resi, you don't actually have a knife to fall back on in this one, so once you're completely dry, you're basically screwed and have to reload a checkpoint, or in the worst case scenario, an entire chapter. Now, I've gone over the majority of the game's mechanics and features, and for the most part I enjoyed my time with this one. However, I did encounter a few rather frustrating elements, the first being the aforementioned scarcity of materials for weapons, and the second for me being the swarm creatures which chase you about the place every so often, which I felt were entirely unnecessary and just ended up being more of a nuisance. I also felt that at times there was an excessive amount of walking, which I understand was done to give the island a feeling of scale, but progressing from one location to the next often felt like a bit of filler material, though the fast travel system does cut down on this somewhat. All in all though, The Chant is a fairly decent survival horror game which has some interesting mechanics and tries to do things a little differently, opting for that melee combat system over guns and assaulting you with psychic horrors rather than the usual zombies or psychopaths, and this is something that I can definitely appreciate. There are a few known bugs at the moment which are blocking progression, but are set to be fixed with a day one patch, but on the whole I didn't encounter anything game breaking, and if you're a fan of survival horror games, then I'd definitely consider giving this one a go when it releases, though I highly suspect we will see it making its way to Game Pass at some point in the near future. So visually then, although The Chant is a Series X and S exclusive, to be honest, I wasn't really blown away by the graphics with this one, and at points it even felt as though they could have been last gen visuals, especially when it comes to the character models and animations. There is a good amount of detail into the environments, and I'd definitely say that the lighting, volumetric smoke and particle effects are what push this one onto the next gen platform, 
but there was nothing that really wowed me with them, especially when you look at them in comparison to something like A Plague Tale or even Scorn. And despite the somewhat tame visual quality, according to Alex, the Series S version also suffers from some frame rate issues. But if you're wanting to see how the Series X visuals stack up against the Series S ones, we'll have a full graphical comparison between the two, which you'll find linked in the description below once the video is live. So on the audio things I'd say that they've done a really good job with this one, especially when it comes to building the atmosphere of the game. We get some decent sound effects and the voice acting in the game is pretty solid too. But for me it's definitely the chant soundtrack which is the real hero here, as we get some awesome dark atmospheric tunes to keep the tension going whilst moving around, and as soon as the combat kicks in this switches to some 80s sounding electronic rock, which really fits well with the gameplay. So but overall some really good stuff when it comes to the audio. So the final verdict on the chant then, and while I did have my issues with its combat system and progression wise I found it became somewhat repetitive, on the whole there's still a lot to like about the game, and it's clear that the team at Brass Token have really put the heart into creating more of a story driven survival horror experience whilst also bringing some really unique mechanics to the genre. Being a small dev team, it wouldn't really be fair to compare this one to big AAA budget survival horrors like Your Resident Evils or Silent Hills, but all in all it's been put together really well, and so today I'm going to be giving it a solid 7 out of 10 for a rating. If you like survival horror games though and are looking for a new one to dive into, then I'd say the chant is well worth checking out. With that said though, will you be checking this one out when it releases tomorrow on the 3rd of November, or will you be holding out with the hopes of it hitting Game Pass in future? Let me know down in the comments section below. As always though, drop a like if this review helped you out, consider subscribing to the channel for more deals, reviews and graphical comparisons, and as always, thanks once again for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks everybody. Take care.